So we'll start now. So um, my name is Shazia Khan, and the unit that you're doing today is academic writing skills. And thank you for attending this morning. Um, the learning outcome we're going to do today is learning outcome two, which is to produce a written response in an, in an appropriate format. And we'll use the example we used yesterday, which was to describe the implications of hypertension. So we look at that example in today's as well. So you'll know what we've done a little bit of what we did yesterday. So we looked at um, what academic writing is and why it's so, so important. So if I ask you, uh, any of you, uh, about academic writing, why do you think it's so important in regards to, you know, trying to get information and is any sort of research across to someone? Why do you think it's so important? Uh, Josephine, why do you think it's so important, academic writing? Why is it important? Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's important. Hold on. Why, why is it important to have like a, a good structure, you know, um, so that you how, why is it important to be critical and balanced and you know precise why is it good to have you know a, a good structure with academic piece of work it's important to, uh, i think it's important because it it uh, it explain it it help us to do our jobs is it is it like a formal piece of document Quite, yeah. you know, professional, yeah. So when we looked at different types of ac academic writing, did anyone get into mind what it was? So we had um, essays. What else do? You, what else could it be? Um, articles. Articles, good. Anything else? Journals. Journals, yeah. It could be research papers. It could be. Uh, lab reports, literature reviews, any sort of annotated bibliography. And these are really important when we write or talk about academic writing because it's so important that it comes across and it's communicated well to the person who's reading it. Okay, so this was in learning outcome one. We also looked at Harvard referencing and why it's important that we, again, um, I reiter reiterate this all the time and I will all the time. It's, it's the tool that is used, the referencing style that is used um, <clears throat> for assignments at UK Varsity. Why do you think it's so important to have Harvard referencing in your work or any sort of referencing? Why do you think it's so important? Uh, it yeah. communicate it communicate to, uh, to your audience that uh, uh, the work you are doing is not your own work; it's from somebody else. Yeah, and then for that body face, you have to put references in, don't you? Yeah. Yes, because it's it's not that you're copying the work; you're just referring to the work. So you know you need to make sure that your work that you are referring to. If it is not your work, you are referencing it because that could come up straight away as plagiarised. OK, uh, so it's really important that you reference your work using the different systems that are in place. And um, the one that we use is the Harvard referencing system. It also looks at, you know, things like, you know, um, we looked at yesterday at um, open questions, closed questions. We also looked at in learning outcome one is we looked at um, the issue around, you know, um, the example that I gave you of the scenario with the hypertension question and how, how we would um, look at what we would do in that question, you know, so what are we expected to do? Are we expected to describe? So the question was describe the possible implications of a diagnosis for hypertension and would have the patient attending the JP surgery. So we had to break that question up and analyze what that question wanted us to do. So it wanted us to look at the implications. It wanted us to, you know, look at uh, focusing the, on the implications of hypertension. It didn't want us to, you know, define what hypertension was and it identified. So it, it 
you need to really be taking time to read questions and you know identify meanings of them so today we're looking at learning outcome two which is to produce a written response in an appropriate format so you know it's so important you respond to something in an appropriate format so the reader understands what you are writing so learning outcome two indicative content so we've got planning a written response so consider the question carefully and the conclusion required write three or four key points that supports the argument for each point, identify one or two examples from research to support the, uh, the point. Note words or phrases that will be useful at each stage. Note the sources used so they can be acknowledged. Write a coherent and logical response. So once the plan is in place and the requirements of the question have been analysed, the learner should ensure that there's a strong introduction which sets out what will be covered. Also, the learner needs to look at beginning to structure the key points in a logical way. Ensure that each point furthers the argument or discussion and end with a conclusion that sums up what has been discussed and answers the question. So use a format appropriate to the subject. Learners should be able to select the best format for the topic based on intended audience and purposes. For example, to inform, to explain, and this may be an essay in an investigation, an art or photographic collection or a video, etc. So you need to consider these in your learning content. Um, there's a video here on uh, the five C's, which we'll watch. So let me just pause this, the recording. So this video that we've watched was on the five C's of effective business writing. So, you know, a good business letter needs to be written in, uh, you know, we'll always written with the reader in mind. So you, you need to like consider, like she says, um, who will be reading the letter. So, you know, why is it important to consider who will be reading the letter? Should you write the five C's in regards to who would be reading the letter? You also need to look at things like who does the reader already know so and who does the reader need to know and what does the reader need to know. So the five C's of business um, writing can help you, you know, write an effective letter. So your letter, it, like she said, it should be clear. Does anyone remember anything else? Clear? Which other one? From the video, correct. 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 Yeah. Excellent. What else? Clear. Correct. Does anyone remember anything else? It, um, is precise. Courteous. Con. There was courteous, concise, not precise. You put us. Yeah, it's concise. Yeah, yeah. yeah concise. So, yes. Excellent. So it must be clear which is to make sure the purpose and intent is clear to the reader. So anyone reading it is able to understand it. It must be complete. So it must include all the necessary information. It must be concise uh, because it must be including all necessary and relevant information. And it must be courteous. It must address the reader politely. And then it must be correct, which is to unscramble the sentence. So why is it <clears throat> why is it so important that it must be courteous? It must address the reader politely. Why do you think that's so important? <clears throat> why do you think it's so important to be courteous? Um, because of your audience that is yeah. going to be giving um they're going to read. Yeah, because Can of your you, audience. Yeah. They have to, you have to be polite as well, don't you, when you're writing to yeah. a professional audience or any audience that, you know, you're able to address. Come on, very good to you. Yeah. So then we've got the seven C's of communication. And this is, uh, the seven C's is checklist to ensure your communication is effective. So we communicate 
naturally with people every day, don't we? Both at work and in our personal life. We always communicate with people all the time, even if we're on the phone. We communicate using different methods. So we'll use face-to-face. In most of your profession, I don't, I, some of you will be using face-to-face. -face. Some will be using tele telephone communication. We have things like email communication, instant messenger that we all communicate with, things like WhatsApp. Um, I'm sure most of you use it every day because I use it every day. Um, Facebook, things like that. Letters we communicate through reports, meetings, presentations and more, you know, to and in order to ensure that we have the right result when communicating, you need to ensure that your communication is effective and clear. And this is where the C seven C's can help you. You know, if you're communicating, for example, if you're working in a hospital and you're communicating something to an elderly patient, why is it important that your communication is effective? Yeah. Why is it so important that the what you're communicating to the elderly person is effective yeah, for, and uh, clear? Sorry? For him to understand, you know, yeah. and to help him. Yeah, because some people, especially uh, we're going back to the elderly and the young, uh, it's very difficult to for them to understand what you're saying sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's, it's a hard, it's hard work. Um, and if it's anyone who's got any special needs or any disabilities, it's quite hard sometimes to make them understand what you're saying and, and to be clear. Yeah. Um, and if, if, for example, if you've got someone, uh, another example within the nursing profession, if you've got someone who's got dementia or it's very, very hard to work with that person. So you've got to be really patient. You've got to be cl clear to what you're presenting to them. You know, so you, you've got to take your audience into account. You've got to take the atmosphere into account when you're doing, you know, presenting something that's quite clear for that person. So the seven C's, we've got the first one, which is clear. So here, make objective clear, avoid complex words and phrases. So you need to be clear about the goal of your message, the purpose, present one idea, make it easier and set a goal to communicate and work towards. Why do you think cl clarity, clear is so important? Why do you think sometimes, especially in the nursing profession, you need to avoid, um, you know, complex words? Why do you, does everyone understand them? No, not everyone. Yeah, but to help uh, everyone to understand what you want. That's sorry. You communicate to, to them. Yeah, not everyone. Uh, people you are communicating to. Yeah, not not everybody understands understand. you. Yes, and they don't understand complex words and phrases that you use within your profession. So you know, you need to make sure they're clear. Um, uh, especially you know, I teach law, but within the legal profession, there's some terms that students don't understand. And if I don't make it clear, and if I don't use maybe English that they understand or the wording that they'll understand, they will be struggling. So I always tell people if there's certain words or concepts you don't understand, you know, ask. There's nothing wrong with asking because we all, you know, that's how you learn. When you ask, you learn. The next one on the seven C's is um, concise. What is concise? We talk about... So that is to be clear and to the point. Avoid filter words and sentences. So well, keep it to the... Sorry? To be specific. Yes. So give me an example of being specific within your profession. But you have to be quite specific about something. Uh, example, um, maybe you're talking to... Uh, somebody with um, an ethnic or maybe doesn't understand yeah you. yeah yeah so if you're going to explain you have to use if you're using just a pose um, expression you have yeah. to be specific on that expression to make him understand you excellent yeah so you might have to you know repeat yourself a couple of times yeah. in different ways you might have to you know 
look at engaging and communicating to make them understand easier. You may have to avoid using like unnecessary words and, and be, keep it clear so that the person is understanding things. The next one we've got, thank you for that. The next one we've got is concrete. So here, uh, be specific, not vague. Use facts and figures to support your answers. So, you know, ensure there's enough detail to get the message across. Uh, but not too much detail so that the person gets confused and lost. You know, uh, make sure your main points and your conclusions are clear to the recipient. The next one is correct. So try to avoid typos, use correct facts and figures and use the right level of language. So ensure it's free from any sort of grammatical errors. Ensure your language is understandable. Um, you know, because some people who are going to read it have to understand what you're writing. Um, the next one is coherent. So this is, does the message make sense? Ensure that it flows, you know, and it links in with the topic. Make sure the tone of your message is the same throughout uh, and it doesn't change. Um, and then you've got complete, which is part of the 7C. So does the message contain everything it needs to? Um, ensure that everything... Uh, is in there so that the person reading it is able to understand it. Ensure uh, your details are clear again and think about uh, how you will check that the person will understand it. And then we've got the final, which, which is again going back to courteous. Uh, being polite builds goodwill, ensure message is tactful, you know, uh, be friendly, be professional, think about your message. Um, and think about, you know, if you can be em empathetic towards the individual's needs um, and this will help you understand. Uh, also communicating to the reader can make the communication more engaging. Um, and, you know, why do you think it's so important to bear in mind these seven uh, elements of communication why do you think it's so important to have these the seven c's so let's see why why does why do you think it's so important Portia, why do you think it's so important to have the seven c's in place it helps you to construct um a good writing yeah yes it helps you to deliver your message more effectively, doesn't it? Yeah. And it helps you to communicate everything to the person and make the person understand what you're trying to communicate to them. So it's so important you get these elements, you know, to help you, like a checklist, so that you're able to identify that you're, you know, what you're saying, they're able to understand. There's no point sending a message that they don't understand. So here, 2.1. Devise a detailed plan for a written response. Oops, sorry, just put me there. Right. Devise a detailed plan for a written response to the specific question. When you have been given a question to answer, often the most difficult task is working out how to get started. However, this is precisely the time at which you are best placed to create a plan for your answer. So... You know, when you get a question, it's always to identify the plan and try to put down what you need to answer. We have already gone over how to interpret the instructions for answering a, a question and the meaning of a question. We now need to turn into the, a plan. So during the planning session, you need to keep a number of key points into um, consideration. These are that the five conventions of academic writing, which we've looked at, cohesion. Okay, the first one. Your answer should easily move from one paragraph or concept to the next. Clarity is so important. The answer should be written in a clear language so that the person is able to understand it. Consistency. So the answer should be written in the same style throughout, in the note form or in a prose form, but not both. So make sure there's consistency, the writing style, the, you know, the, the font size, things like that is all coherent throughout. Conciseness, the language used should convey the meaning in as few 
well-used words as possible, and completeness include all relevant information in the, your answer. The answer should follow a logical pattern and provide a logical argument. Planning. Most academic answers will require the following components, an introduction, the main body, and a conclusion. Subjects differ in the way in which essays are developed and arguments are constructed. However, the information is below is likely to be useful to everyone. So the introduction, it should specify and address the question. Explain the argument you are presenting and how you have interpreted the question. Why do you think an introduction is so important? Do you think it sets the seed of the assignment? Yeah, yes. it helps yes. you to know the, the audience to know what you are talking yeah. about. Yeah, Even and I think it's a quite. Planning. Yeah, yeah, and it like I said, it sets the it set, sets all the seed and starts it off. So it, it then you can go into the main body. So here you would describe, define, and develop your argument or set of ideas. This section will be made up of several paragraphs and you will need to plan the theme of each paragraph carefully and make sure you present your answer in a logical order. The conclusion, here you will summarise the main points and explain how the arguments and evidence answer the question. Spidergrams, so these are a way, alternative way of planning on answer. An answer is using a spidergram. And spidergrams are quite good. I use them sometimes if I want to look at cases or identify any sort of, if I put in the middle the case and then identify concepts of the case, it really helps. And people learn differently. Uh, and spidergrams uh, have been used for yeah. years because they help people plan their work, but also it helps you come up with ideas when answering the question. So, for example, if I was to give my students a scenario about a murder um, and they would come up with uh, putting the scenario in the big in the question in the middle where it says question and then they would come up with headings so they could look at murder manslaughter voluntary involuntary they could look at um whether they have actus reus bens reus these are intention so they could identify that and from each one they'll have sub ideas which maybe if they looked at manslaughter involuntary, voluntary, they could have cases. So it kind of helps people. Um, and Spidergram is a planning tool. Does, does any of you use Spidergrams for anything, even at work? Or maybe whilst in your in a past life where you've been in education, you've used any Spidergrams for revision or anything like that? No? Okay, so it is a planning tool that helps you to group information and ideas so that you have a rough outline of how you want to answer and how you want to look at it and, and what you want it to contain before you start writing. Um, and then the example on the side is a, uh, a spidergram. So 2.2, uh, use the plan to write a coherent and logical response to a specific question. Again, we're using the last one we used. Describe the implications uh, diagnosis of hypertension would have on a patient attending the GP surgery. And this is a spidergram looking at that. Can you see the question in the middle, everyone? Not very clear, but I can just mm -hmm. kind of increase the size a little bit for you so that we can... Can you see that now, yeah? Yeah, yes. yes. So you've got the question in the middle, okay? And this is a good way to, of trying to help you as well because then you have the introduction and in the introduction, you're gonna put information about the relevant conditions, treatment and implications, the key terms to define. Then you would work onto the main body on the side. So you did evaluate the implications, what effects do you need to discuss? And then from the effects, you look at positive and ne negative effects, mm -hmm. the subheadings. Mm -hmm. Then you would look at the conclusion. So provide an answer to the conclusion without repeating yourself from the introduction and the main body. And then the reference, which you would acknowledge the sources you've used. That's quite clear. Do you all understand that from this example question? Yes, please. Yeah. It, why do you think this is good to have, body face? Why do you think it's good? 
you, you get the references. Yeah. Uh, you acknowledge the sources. Does, the, does it help you? Does it help you do the assignment yeah. as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps yeah. You to construct your assignment perfectly. Yeah, because it looks at the introduction, which is the first part, then the main body, then the conclusion and references. So it gives you a structure of how to start and do your assignment. Is that clear with everyone? Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then we've got uh, bearing in mind these conventions. Just reduce the size a little bit. So the format, the format bearing in mind these conventions, we can create a plan for our work. We use the examples questions from section one. So that was the hypertension question, describe the possible implications a diagnosis of hypertension would have on a patient attending their GP surgery. So you would have an introduction, okay? And here we would set the scene. So this is what you would put in your introduction on that question. So this is your question example okay can you all see that yeah? yeah and then this is this is setting the scene this is telling you what should go in this question so in your introduction you should explain the tension this is the elements you should have in your introduction explain the term hypertension explain the incidence of hypertension in the uk explain how many people are treated for hypertension in the uk by their gps explain what treatment for hypertension can entail and explain the long-term implications of non-treatment of hypertension. Then the main body. Here you will go through the possible impact this diagnosis would have on patients. So you would look at positive and negative elements. So the positive ones allows the patient to have a diagnosis and have reassurance of being treated. Another positive is that it allows the GP uh, to explain the implications for the patient and allay any inaccurate assumptions. A negative assumption is that uh, depression at the diagnosis of a chronic disease oh, and yeah, effects, yeah. it also can affect on the individual uh, versus effect on the patient's wider family social circle. It could impact on family life and it changes in smoking, eating, drinking habits, and worry for the rest of the family, need to be taken into regular lifelong medications and start exercise program with family. So this is the main body of it. Then we've got the conclusion. Here, you would summarize the proceeding. Why is it important to conclude in any sort of work? Why do you think it's important to have a conclusion? Why do you think it's so important to have a conclusion? It, it, uh, audience know you finished what you're talking yes, about. Yes, you're right. The audience will know you've finished. But then does it conclude your essay as well? By bringing everything together and summarising it? Yes. Yes, it, it's then it's there normally to summarise um, the preceding paragraphs and give your opinion about whether this would be a positive or negative experience. And even any sort of suggestions about how the patient experience can be improved with e examples. Um, and, and this is really important because it summarises the whole piece of work that you've done um, from the main body and the introduction. And it summarises everything to the final point. Um, and then finally is the reference list, which will include your sources that you've used um, and the, using the Harvard system of referencing and why you've used this source. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the actual whole, um, when you're putting in the edition, the book name, the author's details, uh, up-to-date edition, the year of the publication of the book. So you need to put all that in and it needs to be in chronological order using the Harvard references. It is very important that the work of others is not directly copied and passed off as your own work. And this is called plagiarism and not acceptable. And we've talked about this. So important that you do not pass off work that is not yours. 
um, because you know you are plagiarizing it. It's not your work. Um, it needs to be referenced properly, and it needs to be uh, you know identified that you've referenced it clearly and using the Harvard system because you know work can come up and it would bring up your plagiarism report. Um, and that could be academic misconduct then, you know, so you need to make sure that you are not, it's literally, the people say it's cheating. You know, we plagiarise, but it is cheating. You are taking someone else's work. Try to paraphrase things as well. And it makes sense if you par paraphrase things into, maybe if you've got a long quote, maybe paraphrase it into a shorter quote. Also, you know, reference everything you use. These are some of the references that we've used for today's learning outcome too, which was Kaufman W.E. 1971, which looked at essay examinations, educational uh, measurement, second edition, page 271, Washington, D.C., American Council on Education. We've also used a book by Davies, B.G., 1993, which was Tools for Teaching, San Francisco and Josie Bass. And then Ebel R and Frisbee DA, 1986, Essential of Education Measurement. This is using the Harvard system as well. So these are some references that you could refer to you in your own time. Um, also read the activities on page 15 and 19, academic writing. Um, if you go onto the links here, these links are really, really good to look at academic writing. So the first link is bbc.co.uk and that's learning English go the distance academic writing and then writing and planning um your work why is it so important to plan your work sorry for that why is it so important to have a plan ready to you know do your work i think it, it helps you to have an accurate structure it helps you to sorry what was that uh to, uh, to have an accurate uh, structure yeah. Yeah, and why do you think that's so important, Boniface? Uh, because you are, you are communicating to your audience and yeah. your uh, writing should be accurate and coincides. Yes. And, and is that the structure you're going to follow? Yes, please. Yes, yeah. So you need to, you know, discuss this with your tutor, but also, you know, try to get a plan together. It's so important and it's... Even for children, you know, planning little things later on, you know, that, that needs to be, planning is really important, you know, even in any way. But for your writing, it's really important because you have a plan, like Bonnie Fez said, of what you're doing and what you're going to put together. So any sort of inquiries or queries, uh, the email you need to email is learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Submission of work needs to be on the same website, learnerwork at ukvarsity.uk. And uh, it's two weeks after your um, your whole mod unit has been um, taught, okay? A lot of the additional reading is on Moodle for you to look at. Uh, any sort of samples or anything is on Moodle for you to look at. So you need to refer to them. Um, we've finished the session now for learning outcome two, okay? If you've got any questions, ask away. If not, I will see you next week in learning outcome three and then the assignment discussion. Has anyone got any questions? No. Okay. No? no. Anyone? No. If you have any questions, email LearnerWorks and they'll send me to the email. Um, and then just, you know, uh, identify any sort of... You know, areas you will be looking more at the learning outcome too. Grace, have you? Hi, Grace. I think you've just come in. Yeah. So yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. It's been recorded. The um the the, the session for today learning outcome two has been recorded, um and also you know um read around, just read around uh what we've done today in regards to you know the seven C's and uh, if you want to read around the five C's as well have a look at that for all of you and there's some additional reading on Moodle there's also some other sources that you can go on to get any sort of uh, sample assignments on Moodle I think they have put some up someone did mention yesterday um and any you can use these websites for any sort of academic writing or planning your writing um and if you haven't got any question 
Um, thank you for attending today's session and I will see you next Saturday at nine o'clock uh, for Learning Outcome 3. If you've got any thank questions, you. just ask. Have you got any questions, anyone? No. Okay. No. So I will see you next week, everyone. Is that okay? Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Have a nice okay. week, everyone. Okay. Have a lovely Thank week. You. Thank you. And you too. Thank That's you. Like a, 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 Thank a, 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 you.